Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on the book of Joshua. Before we could start, can one of us please lead us in prayer? Wonderful Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your name. Daddy, for you are good God. We ask you, Daddy, as we have gathered here to study your word, help us to understand it better. Help us open, us open our eyes of understanding. Give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know your word. Lord, we bless you and we thank you. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ruslan, for that wonderful prayer. Thank you. So... As the students join, I'll just share the notes. So we all have the notes ready with us, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So today we're going to study on the book of Joshua. Even before we could study the book of Joshua, I would like to let you know uh, about uh, the books that we studied before. What are the books that we studied from the Pentateuch? The first five books, that is from Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy are the first five books of the book of Pentateuch. So now the next set of books we're going to study, that is the 12 books from the book of Joshua to Esther. It says book of Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel. Then we have 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah and Esther. So these are called as the historical books. In uh, the, well, the Pentateuch uh, introduced to us the birth of Israel and its formation, uh, you know, and uh, from Joshua to Esther, we see how, uh, how Israel's history resumes uh, from where the Deuteronomy is left, covering about 800 years of Israel's history, these 12 books will tell us about the conquering and possess, possess, uh, possession of this promised land, Cana, under the leadership of Joshua and, uh, and also the reign of different judges during uh, different judges of each moment. And we also see the darkest days in Israel history as we study these books and we'll see the establishment of kings coming in. So uh, these uh, 12 books will introduce the first king. The first king was Saul and followed by David. And after that, they followed by Solomon. And uh, later we see the division of Israel into the two kingdoms, northern kingdom and southern kingdom. And we see uh, different kings ruling the respective kingdom. And then there's a fall of the northern kingdom uh, to Assyria and they get into the exile. And we see the southern kingdom fall into Babylonian and we see how they return to Jerusalem under the leadership of men like Nehemiah and Ezra. So let's get ready as we study each book and we see we get to study the uh, how God leads them, how God leads them and how God fa fights the battle, especially today's book that we're going to study on the book of Joshua. We see how God fights the battle. Literally, when, say, uh, when we read the scripture saying, stay still, the battle belongs to the Lord, is literally so. So we'll see how this book of Joshua unveils itself to us and what the Lord teaches us today. Okay, it's not me, it's the Lord who speaks in and through me. Okay, so who's the author of this book? Who's the author of this book? Joshua is the author of this book. 
okay so joshua died in about 1390 bc and uh, uh, so uh, the scholars believe that joshua would have written before his death in the hometown where he stayed in the land of timnath sarah or uh, the bethel where the priest the levites stayed uh, well the last few chapters because um, was recorded uh, during this time his last days i guess so uh, some of the scholars say maybe phineas wrote or one of the priests would have wrote the last few chapters of joshua okay uh, with this we will go to the introduction of joshua so uh, joshua's original name was hosea which means salvation in the book of numbers chapter 13 verse 8 it's been recorded that moses uh, evidently changes his name to yehoshua in numbers chapter 13 verse 16 it says that moses changed his name from hosea to yehoshua uh, hosea means salvation and yehoshua means Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh is salvation. It is also known as Jehoshua. Joshua. One second. I'll just admit some of our students who have joined us now. Okay. Okay. Which means uh, uh, God is salvation. And uh, you see, uh, it is later. Yehoshua is also called as Yeshua. Yeshua in Hebrew. It is shortened from Yehoshua to Yeshua. And uh, that's how Joshua is, the name Joshua has come. And the Hebrew equivalent to the Greek name is Isios. Uh, is I'm not very sure how I spell the Greek name Isios, which also means Jesus. Okay. Yeshua in Greek is called as Yesos um, or Isios. Uh, which is called as Jesus. Okay. So after the 400 years of bondage in Egypt and 40 years, the Israelites been wandering in the wilderness. We see that in the book of Deuteronomy. Just a short recap from where we left in the book of Deuteronomy before we proceed to book of Joshua. Wilderness, the people of Israel were finally ready to take possession of the promised land uh, since the time of Abraham. So uh, Moses passed on this pattern of leadership, of leading the Israelites to jo uh, jo uh, Joshua. We see that in Deuteronomy, the last chapter of 34. Uh, see, uh, we see Israel was at the end of its wilderness warning. And now we see how Joshua takes it over. So Joshua had been a very faithful follower of Moses very closely for about 40 years he has followed Moses closely and he has take he has learned a lot of leadership skills from Moses you know it is like hand-on training what we say it now um, and also in in the book of Exodus we see um, you know uh, Joshua being a military commander for us to know a little bit about Joshua even before you know, we see him as a leader leading Israel what is the background of uh, Joshua he was a military commander and he was a faithful follower of Moses uh, and you know uh, he was appointed by God you know uh, Joshua was appointed by God himself as a leader after Moses and uh, in all the ways you know Joshua proved himself very faithful very strong very courageous so he was a uh, very Im uh, important tasks were assigned to Joshua by Moses and he always you know, proved himself faithful whatever task was given to him he actually did it well which was a uh, pleasing God. Even uh, when uh, Moses had to send the 12 spies to the uh, promised land to uh, survey the land, you know, though the 10 came with a negative report, only two came with a positive report. That is Joshua and Caleb that pleased God. You know, they had faith on God. They trusted God more than themselves. So Joshua fills both the responsibilities, you know, being the leader and also being dependent on God. Uh, so with this, God chooses uh, 
God chose Joshua to be the next leader and God asked Moses to anoint him, to anoint him and bless him uh, so that he can lead. Also, uh, even before we could uh, go, we will see uh, what does our book say, what is the purpose of our uh, the book of Joshua. The purpose of this book yeah, teaches that God keeps his promise no matter how unlikely their fulfillment may appear. But God is uh, God keeps his promise and he fulfills them despite the Israel's waver. And uh, to show that God's promises are fulfilled in giving the land to the nation. And the next point we see is to show that Joshua succeeded in conquering the land and Israel takes the position of the land with obedience. I'm just admitting some students who have joined in. Okay. And the unique features, we will go with this to the unique features. Joshua records, uh, actually, it is not three memorable miracles. It is four. I will share the miracles with you, okay, as we study at the end. So there are four miracles. Please make that correction in your notes. Joshua reveals that Gentiles were not necessarily excluded from God's plan under the dispensation of the Mosaic law. We see how Rahab, the Canaanite prostitute, who joins the Israelite in, uh, and also she's been mentioned in the you know three places in the New Testament passage, and especially she also been recorded in the genealogy of Christ. I think one of your mic is unmute. Uh, Okay, and uh, we see uh, we see how Rahab has been mentioned in the genealogy of Christ, uh, um, and also in the Hebrew uh, with regards to a faith in Hebrew chapter eleven, where the uh, heroes of faith is mentioned. Even uh, Rahab is mentioned there, and we also see uh, James talking about the good work that Rahab did in James chapter two verse. 25 and Joshua records an important uh, Christophany that is the pre incarnate of Christ appearing to Joshua as a commander of the Lord's army. We will look into it as we study the chapter wise. A comparison with the other books. So the one of the comparison is with the book of Exodus. Exodus records how God led his people out of the land of bondage. While Joshua tells us how God led his people into the land of blessing. And, you know, uh, both the exit, uh, exit of Exodus and the entrance of Joshua uh, involved a miraculous parting when, um, when Israelites, uh, you know, uh, left Egypt. They crossed the Red Sea and entered the, uh, you know, they crossed the Red Sea to journey into the promised land. Uh, they went into the wilderness journey. And here for the now, the same Israelites, a new generation Israelites who wants to go to the promised land, crossing the river Jordan, which is which is a miraculous, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, uh, again, God made the water still. The river was still for them to cross. And both the books are not just literal in their discussion of exit and entrance, but there's a symbolic to it. Believers are spiritually taken out of e Egypt, okay, that is a spiritual death and brought into the Israel which is the abundant of life, the salvation, the free gift of salvation, which is the abundant of life. And we see the key verse here. Uh, the key words, we move on to the key words, uh, like, you know, the word called possess. If you are doing a word study, okay, we see uh, possessing the land. Possess, the word possess has been used many times in this book, 25 times. And inheriting the land, the inheritance, okay, God is giving the inheritance. The word inheritance has been repeated 59 times. And Joshua, his name has been repeated 
169 times and we see the strong and courageous this is something that i uh, added to it so y'all can make a note in your notes the word strong and courageous throughout the bible it's been repeated 25 times the phrase is repeated 25 times but god says four times uh, especially to the uh, israelites in the book of deuteronomy once in the uh, deuteronomy 31 23 and to joshua especially in chapter one three times god repeats it again and again again and again to be strong and courageous that is just to re uh, to strengthen joshua because maybe joshua is thinking how will i lead such a huge generation of people because all these days uh, joshua was following moses with the help of moses he was doing everything but now as the leaders now they now he has to take up the leadership so god is asking him be strong, be courageous. God is also going ahead. You know, when we turn to chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, let's turn to Joshua chapter 1. Again and again, God is affirming, you know, very beautifully, God is confirming to Joshua saying, "As be strong in verse 6, chapter 1, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. You know, again and again, he says, be strong, be courageous. And also, uh, I will be with you as I was with Moses. What an affirmation God is giving in verse 17. God is saying, only the Lord your God will be with you as he was with Moses. You know, God is strengthening uh, uh, Joshua, saying that you have seen my power. You see how I led the Israelites with uh, through Moses. Same way I will be with you. Same way I will be with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will lead you. So this is very important and a very good affirmation uh, to strengthen, to make Joshua strong and courageous. God is helping him. And we see the conquest of the land was in the three stages three stages, the central military camp, we see that, the division of the chapters. Uh, yeah. And, we, uh, and we'll and also in detail look into Joshua's life at the end of this chapter study. Okay. With this, we will move on to the chapter study. Okay, so the book of Joshua is divided into four main sections, or we can call it four movements. Okay, so the first chapter to fifth chapter, we see how Joshua leads Israel. And from sixth chapter to twelfth chapter, we see the battles which, with the Canaanites. And from thirteenth chapter to twenty-two chapter, we see how Joshua divides uh, the land and he gives it to the 12 tribes and chapter 23 to 24 we see joshua's final words okay uh, so in the book of genesis we see how god promised a land uh, that flowing with milk and honey and there will be a homeland, a promised land given to the Israelites. And in Exodus, again, God speaks about God's salvation, basically about delivering them from the bondage and taking them to the uh, 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 taking them to the promised land. And in the book of Joshua, uh, it shows that how God's salvation involves uh, in giving them the victory, in possessing the land which God promised them and giving them the land where they can rest. No more wandering, but they will possess and rest in this land. And this is what it says. And the first section First section, uh, we see a uh, beginning of the uh, Moses' death and Joshua is appointed as a new leader and the author intentionally presents uh, Joshua as the new Moses to the Israelites. And uh, in, in, in chapter one, as we study, the book starts, 
saying with a promise, God promising Joshua, saying, I will be with you. Be strong and be courageous. Can we can we uh, read Joshua chapter 1, verse 3 onwards? Can one of us please read 3 to 9? Chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the lands of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swear to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on a day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my commandment. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know how many times this word, be strong and courageous, has been repeated by God to Joshua. And also look at that promise God is telling Joshua, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Because it was not very easy to lead Israel. It was not very easy to lead these Israelites because they were, you know, they, you know, Joshua by now, he has seen the different uh, moments with Israelites. They emotionally be go very good when they believe in God. The minute you know, everything is fine and they go back to the normal life. They rebel. They, they rebel also against the leader, against God. So Mo, Joshua was very, uh, maybe he was not very sure of how he can lead the people. But God is again and again affirming him, listen, I love this people. This is my nation. And as I was with Moses, I will be with you and you can lead. You know, God is uh, strengthening Joshua, saying that you can do it. Today, the same promise God is giving to us, as God has called us to his work, to his ministry. Even we may be very apprehensive in leading. We are taking the back seat and saying, God, I will follow you. In fact, I did this. I said, Lord, I will just, you know... Um, be good to you. Do not ask me to share about you or talk about you to anyone. Maybe many of us are like that. But today God is asking us or also affirming to us, saying the same promise that he gives Joshua, saying that as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Be strong and be courageous. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if we have to be successful in our ministry, in our work, in our business, let's read jo Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. What does it say? The book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but shall meditate in it day and night. Why do you think that we need to meditate on this book day and night? Just unmute and give out your answers. That's okay. There's nothing called right and wrong answer. Just share what you think. Why should we meditate on this book of law day and night? So that we will never forget. So that we will not forget what the Lord has done. All that he did for Israel. We will start believing. Why should God do all supernatural things to Israel so that they believe that the God is real, the God is leading them. During the day, God led them with the pillar of cloud and in the night by the pillar of fire. You know, God actually, a uh, tangible presence was there. They could literally see God's presence among them. 
they could hear certain places god enabled the israelites to hear god's voice they saw god providing them supernaturally the manna and the quail and they saw how god you know um, punish them when they actually uh, they had to face a consequence of their sin when they rebelled against god and they also know that a god is holy god so beginning of the book itself god is instructing joshua to tell the israelites how they need to observe and keep the commandment and it is so important only when they keep it in front of them they will remember that god is holy and they will lead a holy life that pleases god and they will not do certain things that displeases him okay so that they will be successful they will be prosperous any battle um, that they fight god can bless them so not only then even now to us when we do things please god we see god give us success we see god's grace over our life over our ministry over our business over our work so let's see god in all our ways all our ways okay so as we study we'll see we will move on to <clears throat> chapter 3 to 4 we see joshua leads all the israelites across the jordan river into the land and uh, how did how did uh, he lead them again there's a supernatural thing just like the sea parted in the moses time in the book of exodus now the river jordan parts as the priest carried the ark of the covenant you know across leading all the israelites with them we see how it is i just got a image uh, to make the class interesting the scripture records the minute the priest okay the priest uh, you know uh, priest feet touches the water the water you know the uh, the the river parts the river parts so one side where the flow is the water is standing as a heap the other side because there is no flow the land is dry so that the israelites can cross can uh, cross th- from the wilderness to the promised land so the priests carry the tabernacle and they go in the center middle of the river they stand holding to the ark of the covenant where they believe the presence of god is so what is inside this ark of the covenant there are three things inside the ark of the covenant i'll just i had got it but i could not share it with you all before okay so there are three things god asked to keep one is the aaron's rod that was budded second was the tabernacle two tablets and the third was a pot of manna was kept inside this ark of the covenant and they carried it everywhere they went everywhere they went so also i wanted to share this ark of the covenant was made with pure wood and also it was covered by pure gold saying that jesus this also denotes that you know jesus was 100% man and 100% god so these are the three things that was inside the ark of the covenant and they carried this covenant with them wherever they went so the covenant uh, you know the priests carry the covenant they standing in middle of the river and they allow the israelites to pass the minute they passed and then the ark of the covenant uh, the priests carry the ark of the covenant and cross the river the river started flowing back to it but before that joshua tells god told jo- instructed joshua saying all the 12 tribe leaders should carry stone carry each stone from this river along with them so they carry big stones along with them and after that they make a memorial wall out of the stones they put all the stones together the 12 stones like a heap so that 
they can narrate the story incident what happened how god miraculously led people to cross this river to the generation to come so that's why they had to carry a memorable stone and cross over this cross over this jordan river <clears throat> so uh, from this we will move on to chapter 5 in chapter 5 we see uh, you know uh, the transition like you know pe uh, the people have crossed and they have rested uh, so now we see uh, people uh, the israelites are celebrating the passover so uh, they they get back One second, it's not yeah. So the covenant people and the new uh, generation people needs to be circumcised uh, because they have not circumcised in the wilderness. So now uh, Joshua's uh, God instructed Joshua to tell all the new generation men to be circumcised. So they circumcise themselves in this place and then they celebrate the first Passover in this land and they rest till they all are healed. And after that. they move forward they prepare themselves to conquer this land which is that first battle they face which is the first battle to possess the land which is the first battle that they face to possess this promised land the wall jericho the wall of jericho yes so moses is preparing the israelites you know uh, with the instruction of whatever uh, god ha he has received from god he prepares them to go and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, get over this land so he prepares them he tells them the instruction how god is leading them leading them they need to you know in uh, in uh, chapter 6 we see how god is instructing joshua can any of us read from chap uh, chapter 6 verse 2 onwards and the lord uh -huh. said to joshua see i have given jericho into your hand its king and the mighty men of valor you shall march around the city all you men of war you shall go all around the city once this you shall do 6 days and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of rams rams horns before the ark but the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the rams horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him amen amen so we see i'll just project this the wall of jericho see there is a lower wall and there's an upper wall and god instructed the israelites to go around the city for 6 days once and on the 7th day they had to go 7 times and on the 6 days they had to go around with silence they should not shout no speaking nothing with all silence they had to go and on the 7th day 7 times they had to go and the priest blows the trumpet and then there's a great shout after the instruction of Joshua Joshua gives them the instruction to shout and they all shout and the wall of the city falls trumpling down why should god do this why should god do this do you think all 6 days when they go round god was getting energy was energizing them to bring this wall down and they say this wall is very thick you know uh, some of the scholars say that this wall is so thick that even a chariot can go over it you know so thick wall it's not something very thin uh, at the shout of the people the wall came down no it was very strongly built 
it was a you know a, a strongly built wall no way they could enter in um, the minute they saw the israelites were camping around the place um, you know the jericho the king of jericho closed the gates of jericho that none can enter in and six days when they were six days when they went around jericho yes people of jericho was wondering what's happening at the same time god did not do that to let uh, uh, people of jericho learn a lesson god did this for israelites for you and me to know the power of god you know if god would have decided though uh, you know he could just think immediately the wall of jericho will become like a vapor if god could part a red sea if god could just uh, as a parted a river of jordan and bring them here within no time god can break this big wall but why did god allow people of israel to go six times around this and on the seventh day again seven times just share your views your thoughts on this please open to the class Ma'am, maybe God was checking the obedience of Israelites towards His command. Okay. Um, maybe God wants them to know how powerful He is that nothing is a bigger to Him. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone? Promised land through faith. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Tavia. Yes, God wanted Israel to obey whatever God commands and acquire this with faith. All these days, God did it. God parted the sea. God parted the Jordan River. God did it. But He is expecting the children of Israel, uh, you know, to do something in faith. Abraham was known as the father of faith because he took that step. He left his father's house and he walked in faith. If God would have decided to give him a son. At the at the time when he promised he could have, but God wanted him to walk that walk of faith. And today God is looking at us. We need to walk that walk of faith. God has promised He will do it. We need to have that faith. So during that time, God prepares our heart. There is a process of preparation. There may be something to do with our unlearning. There is something that we need to learn. We need to do something. same way with israelites god wanted israelites to obey god listen to god and whatever he says he says it's done just believe on god's word trust on him so he wanted the children of israel to follow god's instruction to believe on god's word if god says something he will do it these are the simple things that god is teaching through his demonstration to israelite not only to the israelites who were living then even to us today as we read these stories you know we learn certain things in our life what god did then god will do it to us even now the time is going it's 11:40 so soon okay the wall of jericho was complete dependence on god we see it has been recorded in psalms 44:3 for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword nor did they by their own arm save them but it was god's right hand your arm and uh, the light of your countenance because of you favored them it was god who did it when they dependent on god god gives us the victory and even in deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 3 and 6 we see moses prophesying it to the children of israel saying the lord your god himself crosses over before you 
he will destroy these nations from before you and you shall dispose disposes them joshua himself crosses over before you just as the lord has said be strong and of good courage do not fear nor be afraid of them for the lord your god he is the one who goes with you he will not leave you nor forsake you these are the words of moses same words god is telling to us today as i was with them so i shall be with you no matter what type of wall we have front of us in our ministry in our work in our family life in our career for each of us different circumstance or situation whichever we are facing as a the wall of jericho it will come crumbling when we obey god because the scripture says the battle belongs to god as i was reading and studying on this book you know god was teaching so much sometimes we strive we work hard we say that yes lord i have faith in you but you know i also need to do my part yes you have to do when god instructs you but there are some battle when god says the battle belongs to the lord be still so what is required here our faith on god our trust on god our complete dependence should be on god and god moves the mountain god breaks this wall nothing is impossible with him no matter how big fortress can be in front of us god is all powerful let's not exaggerate let's not exaggerate the problem or the difficult situation which is in front of us because god is bigger than that there's a saying that god is bigger than the mountain that we have in front of us or ahead of us okay let's trust on him and his power and we also see there were two battles fought in uh uh one second yes there there are the four miracles which i said okay the miracle is the first miracle was the crossing the jordan river at the flood stage of the dry ground second is the walls of jericho collapsing the third is the lord sent large hailstone to defeat the enemy army what happened they had the second battle first one was with jericho second was with ai when the people of israel when joshua led the people of israel to fight this battle with ai it is spelled as a and i okay we see that in the chapter of uh, you know 7 israelites lost the battle with ai Joshua was shocked how can this happen because God said he will go before us and he will give us the victory what happened so they started to find out so Joshua went and prostrated in front of God and he prayed and he asked God God where did we go wrong because Joshua knew something has gone wrong from our side because our God is a promise keeper and when he prayed God reveals that what happened in his camp one of his member whatever god had commanded not to take anything from the battle of jericho you know not to take anything but there are certain things god said you can take the gold silver a uh, few things uh, god instructed them to take uh, gold silver okay okay uh, we are in chapter 6 verse 24 quickly i'll read because of the time but they burned the city and all that was in with the fire only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the lord okay and uh, they spared rehab because she helped the spies in rescuing them so god saved rehab and her family her household okay so what happened when god told instructed joshua and his army to take up only silver gold and the vessel of bronze and iron and put it in the god's treasure house okay not anyone to take it but what happened there was a person called akan without the knowledge of anyone he takes few things few things we read that in the, the chapter 7 and that was the reason because he took certain things of uh, uh, like you know belong to god like uh, the the uh, the garment which the people were wearing some expensive garment and few items and silver he hid in his tent uh, you know we see in uh, joshua chapter 7 verse 21 
he has taken the beautiful Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold wedging 50 shekels and he covered it over them and he hid it in the earth in the middle of his tent. Okay, so because of that, they had to face this defeat with the army and they cannot move ahead. They were also affected with the plague. Okay, and when God showed them, okay, and God instructed Joshua to burn that whole family. So they had to take Israelites, uh, literally had to take Akan and his family, uh, you know, out all his possession along with the cattle, ox, everything. And they had to put him outside the city and stone him and burn the whole things that he took. Only then they found favor with God and they could move. So when the sin was removed from them. God don't have to do it. God is a merciful God. But why God should allow this? We should we should not look at, read the Old Testament scripture with this perspective, hey, God punished. God is a punishing God. No. You see, everything was very supernatural. God had to do this with signs for people to see and believe because their heart condition was like that. So every time God had to do something with signs for them to believe. So God to bring a holiness in, among the Israelites, God to uh, make the Israelites to listen and obey to God's command. God had to bring this judgment upon the people who rebelled against God. That's what in the New Testament we see Jesus saying it's more blessed for the people who believe without saying than who believe with saying. You know, they had to do it because every time God had to do something in action for people to see and then believe. So when we read the Old Testament, we'll see many things, but do not uh, look at those things as God is an angry God. God is a punishing God. No, he's been merciful and loving God. But because of people, because their heart was hardened, that's why in the New Testament, Jesus says, because people's heart was hard. That's why they could not understand. Okay. So this is what it is. And when the, uh, when, uh, when uh, Akan family was burned and everything, and, uh, you know, God gave, again, they went and fought the battle with, AI and this time God gave victory. How uh, we see the third miracle, Lord uh, sent the large hailstone to defeat the enemy's army and you know and the fourth army and God gave them the victory and we see the Lord uh, during the battle we see Joshua instructing in chapter 10 verse yeah 12. 12 and 13, we see how Joshua makes the sun stand still over the Gibeon and moon in the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenged upon their enemies. So how did this happen? Time and again, God showing greater things, greater things so that people believe People, one is for the Israelites to believe that the God is with them. They need to, uh, you know, with reverence, they need to obey. And also for the other people, uh, the other kingdoms who are around to know and fear that God is with Israel. And we cannot stand against the God of Israel, though the Israel may be small in number, but there's a powerful God who is with them. So people feared. These battles brought fear into the other kingdoms. So many of them did not fight with Joshua. They went with peace treaty and, you know, allowing them to possess the land. So this is what the Lord um, did. did. And also we see uh, in uh, verse 14, When Joshua spoke these words in 12 and 13, the sun stood still over Gibeon, the moon and all. We see in verse 14, and the Lord heeded the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. Today, you and I, in our journey with the Lord, in our faith with the Lord, when we speak, when we speak, our voice has been heard. Sometimes we may feel we are so insignificant. How can we do such things how can we serve a mighty god we are not holy or we are not righteous you know all these are negative thoughts and they are not from god 
we believe Jesus died on the cross. He has made us righteous. So we have a right standing with God through Christ. We have been justified. We have been set right in front of God. Our relationship has been restored back to God. And in our journey in this life, in our walk with in this life, we may be significant, but God uses insignificant people like you and me, among the significant leaders. There may be mighty king those days. There may be big army, but God led Israel. They were small, but they had a powerful, all-powerful God with them, backing them up. God went before them. That's what uh, uh, Moses prophesied. God will go before you. Same way we see in the crossing of the river Jordan, they carried the tabernacle. The presence of God went. The minute the priest stepped into the water, the water parted. Because the presence of God was there. Same way we have the presence of God. Again and again, I would like to remind us that John chapter 14 verse 16 says, the Holy Spirit who abides in us is forever. So the Holy Spirit is the presence of God who is in us. No matter what problem we may face in our life, it may be as big as a wall of Jericho, or it may be as big as a Red Sea to be parted, or the river Jordan to be parted. When we have the presence of God, let's be still. I know that the battle belongs to God and God brings it down. And always remember to stay strong and courageous because God himself is with us. He himself. Because he has promised that I will be with you. Today as he promised Israel, we read in the book of Joshua saying that I will lead you, I will be with you, I will strengthen you. Same way God is telling us, be strong, be courageous, and I will be with you. I will lead you. I will go before you. So we need to trust in God. These are the some, I know we are uh, uh, some of, uh, you know, the records of Joshua, how Joshua was faithful and God commanded his faithfulness. You know, today we have to be faithful in whichever leadership we have been placed. Let's faithfully obey and serve. In our season, God will raise us as a leader. When we learn to serve faithfully, God honors that. He looks at that. Man may not see what you are doing, but God watches. Our God is a God who watches us. And he appoints us in the right season. And in the book of Joshua, we also see Christophany, where the pre-incarnated of Christ appearance as the commander of the Lord's army in one of the chapters. That is Christ showing himself, Joshua saying that I am the army of the Lord who is with you, will go before you. And that's how they go, march on, uh, conquering the first battle of Jericho. So before Jericho, we have this verse. So I end with the reflection question. What are the some of the leadership lessons that we learn from the life of Joshua? What do we understand about God's power from these three, uh, sorry, four miracles. Please correct that. Four miracles we see in Joshua. We see in Joshua, how does our understanding of God's power help us in our everyday life? Please answer this to yourself as you all study on this book of Joshua and meditate each and every chapter. And this should be our learning from the book of Joshua, that God is with us, he's heading before us, and we need to be strong and courageous and depend completely. When the complete dependence on God, we'll see the victory of God in our life. Okay, with this, we will end this class with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you, we honor you. We thank you, Lord, for every promise that you have given us. Thank you, Lord, that you will be with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us, but you will be with us and you will lead us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word strengthening each one of us in this class to be strong and courageous to every command that you gave, Joshua. We take it, Lord. We take it in us, O oh Father. Every battle that is ahead of us to possess, to fulfill your call, your purpose in our life, Lord, we surrender it to you. 
because knowing that the God who fought for Israel then, the same God will fight for us now. Thank you, Father, for this battle belongs to you. Thank you that you are leading us and guiding us. Thank you, Father, for the strength and courage that we have in you. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, class, for joining in today. I hope this class was a blessing and you'll uh, learn some insights from this book. Did you? Was it a blessing? Did we learn something new yes, today? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much. See you all next week. We'll study the next book. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Sid, you have a question. Okay, I'm just seeing it. The Ark of the Covenant got lost as after 587. Can you do a small research, Sid, on that and get back to us in the next class? Okay. It is a good question. Thank you so much for asking. But when we do our research, we learn better. Okay. I wanted, Sid, you to research on this and get back to us in the next class. So uh, I'll keep the last 10 minutes next class for the time of discussion. Is that okay? Okay, ma'am. Sid, you can hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yes, good, good said. Thank you. God bless. God bless.